Hey there, and welcome back to another Voltage Modular tutorial. In today's video, we're here to take a look at the new Poly Mode module, and we're going to create a sound that in 1975 would have cost you a little more than your average new car. For more Voltage Modular tutorials, be sure to subscribe to the channel down below, and if you have a request for a future video, let us know down in the comments. This is the patch we're going to be breaking down here today. As you can see, it involves two different Poly Modes, as well as a handful of other modules, because we can patch into different points in the Poly Mode, unlike the original Poly Mode, allowing us to take the synth up to a whole new level and create sounds that were never possible before. So before we dive into it and break this thing down, let's take a listen to the final patch. To begin here, we have our first poly mode, which by itself sounds like this. Which isn't really all that fascinating, but it's going to get a lot more interesting here very quickly. To set this patch up, all I really did is adjust the rank octaves, so I've adjusted these and then left them both on saw oscillators. Then I increased the VCF mixer and dropped the resonator mode and direct output. This way, all we're hearing is the output of the filter, and we're going to mix in the other stuff later using a couple cool tricks, but we'll get to there in a minute. Because the poly mode is normal, I didn't actually have to patch any of the inputs. It's already ready to go. The only thing we have to patch in order to start using it is the output. So I sent that out here into my effects chain, but we'll talk about that in a minute. To create that classic pad sound, I just adjusted the amplitude envelope here. The attack is at around 2600 milliseconds, and the decay release stage is about 800 to 900 milliseconds, or somewhere around there. Now, the filter, or the VCF stage has the frequency set here to about 1.4k and then the emphasis is up pretty high at about 80%. The real magic of this patch is the sample and hold module here. So we'll right click and unbypass this and we're going to start sending this out to a couple different destinations. To begin, I set the output here to go to the VCF frequency. So if we start playing the sound again now, You'll hear that that sample and hold is targeting the filter cutoff, giving us that classic stepping filter effect. From there, I just started wiring things out to my effects chain. So the output is going first into this chorus 60 module here. The left and right feed into a PSP delay EX. These feed out into a PSP spring, and the spring is then going to our master output. Now, you could replace these with the standard chorus, delay, and reverb modules, but what makes these fun, especially the delay, is the ability to get a bit more creative with them. The chorus 60 offers that lush stereo chorus that we all know and love. PSP Spring offers us a cool spring reverb to enhance that kind of retro character, but the delay EX is actually really cool because we can use the sends here to essentially create our own delay effect. If we take a look at the cabling here, you'll see that I've set the insert to be in the FB position or the feedback loop, and then I've sent this out into this lo-fi effect, which is reducing the sample rate and the bit depth, and then it's coming back in through the return. All I needed to do to enable this was click the in button here. Now what this means is that the delay is not like any standard delay, instead it's being fed through this lo-fi effect and then continuously getting more grungy and reduced, but you can expand on this as far as you want by adding more and more modules to create a one-of-a-kind delay. Now that we've got the basic pad set up here with the sample and hold effect as well as these effects, we'll start mixing these in and take a listen to what the sound is like at the moment. Fairly subtle, but it's starting to get a bit more interesting. But the real power of this is going to come in with the second poly mode layer. One of the most powerful things you can understand about modular synthesis is that you're not patching together a patch, but rather building a synthesizer from the ground up. In this case here today, what we're essentially going to create is a bitambral poly mode, which is just insane and would never really be realistically possible. If we bring in the second poly mode here, it's actually not going to do anything because the pitch and gate are being overridden from their normal connections by these mini mono to polys. Now, what this is coming from is the arpeggiator module. So let's right click and unbypass that. And we've got this coming from the MIDI in and then I'm sending the mono CV out to a mono to poly and the mono gate out to a mini mono to poly as well. And those are going in and providing the connections for the second poly mode layer to create the arpeggiated sound. In order to get everything synced up and sounding nice here, I took the sample and hold and used the internal clock out and fed that into the clock input of the arpeggiator and used the external clock option. This way, these are synced together. The pattern is set to random just because it's a bit more fun to have a bit of 
unpredictableness to your sound, and then I've set the octave range to two. If you take a closer look at the gate out here, you'll see that this is also being fed into these three LFOs. So let's right click these and unbypass them to bring them in. And this is where things are gonna start to get really spicy. Each of these LFOs is outputting a sample and hold LFO, and this is going to several different destinations, but the reset is being provided by the gate output of the arpeggiator. This way, these sample and holds are all different sample and holds, but they're all synced together. In this case, we could have just used the regular sample and hold module here, but I think it's a bit more fun to be able to override these connections and change the LFO shape for each of these three LFOs. Just offers a bit more flexibility and a bit more sonic interest. One of the coolest parts of this patch is we're able to target the resonator section of the poly mode here. So if you take a look, we have the input for the low, mid, and high bands here coming from these three sample and hold LFOs. So the first one goes to the low band, second goes to mid, and third one goes to high. The other cool thing is I've used the sample and hold LFOs to also target the mixer section. So I've got this third LFO feeding into the mode gain for the master gain section of the second poly mode, and the second LFO is going up here to the mode input of the master gain section of the first poly mode. What this means is we're not only moving Moving around the resonator section, but we're also altering the overall balance of the different mixed outputs of each of these poly mode modules, which makes this sound feel absolutely huge and like there's a lot more going on than there actually is. With all that said and done, we've now created a one of a kind bi timbral poly mode with a custom built delay and a spring reverb, as well as an arpeggiator and resonators that can move around with CV, which is a lot of fun to experiment with. From here, you can experiment with this patch, mixing the different oscillators, mixing the different master gain outputs, or experimenting with all the connections in whatever way you see fit. And that wraps everything up for this video. Poly Mode is available now and you can find it for yourself in the Cherry Audio store. Thanks for watching and for more information on Voltage Modular, you can head over to cherryaudio.com.